of the rich have increased. Uh, rural areas have four regions, and these four regions are, are also representative. Uh, and we are targeting the, the special uh, emphasis of this survey is to target uh, early childhood. Uh, and we are following this cohort that in 2010 they had between 0 and 10 years old. They were 0 and 10 years old. Uh, the children that, are, that we are following are 8,600 children under, under 10, as I told you, and they are half in urban areas, half in rural areas. So for the follow up in 2013 and 2016, we are going to target these type of responses the household head, the partner. The head of the household, son, stepson, grandchildren, and grand grandchildren. We find this type of conversation within the household. And the kids say that we're going to follow up, I was telling you. So we have a panel, but this panel is following a cohort over time. A cohort of In 2013, they had from 3 to 13 years old, and in 2016, they're going to have between 6 and we are also following migrants that go to those to the regional places. Uh, and the attrition in 2013 was 5.8% of the sample. I'm going to show you which were the strategies to, to try to, to keep attrition low uh, between 2010 and 2013. So these are the municipalities. This is a map of Colombia. These are the municipalities that we sampled in 2010. So there are 80 municipalities, 550 villages. Uh, and in 2013, given the migration, the, the inside migration that we had, the internal migration, uh, we had 171 municipalities. Uh, almost double. Uh, so, how are the samples distributed? Urban areas, rural areas, 2010. We missed very little, a small proportion of households, uh, 171 and 163 urban and rural respectively, and we had movement uh, within urban and rural areas. So, uh, 276 households from rural, rural areas moved to urban, and 46 households from urban moved to rural areas. Uh, so, these people are in the urban sample, and this is smaller, but in the second round, we're going to Include them in the urban questionnaire, even though they were from the rural sample. We have separate questionnaires for those areas, given the type of questions that we are uh, asking in those places. Like, for example, I will drop reduction in rural areas. Uh, so we have this 10,800. Then in 2013, we had 94% of the sample. Well, sorry for the first follow up. We're going to go next year for the 2016. Uh, and given that we are, are following a cohort that are 0 to 10, and we had some tests, uh, cognitive and social emotional tests with these children from 0 to 5 in 2010, then we're going to follow them. We follow them in their youth. Now, next year, we're going to follow them in their adolescence. And then in the and we're going to look at differences uh, between these kids and with these tests. We're going to uh, compare and we're going to correlate things with risky behaviors, teenage pregnancy, or type of things that happen in this uh, stage of life, and labor markets in, uh, for the young adults. So, which are the innovations or the value added of the, sur of the survey that we have? Uh, we have a uh, Child development measured by cognitive test, social emotional test, and anthropometrics, uh, which is similar to the Chilean case. Uh, we we check on uh, we, we ask for strategies of households to mitigate the uh, impact of shock of armed conflict and natural disasters. Uh, <coughs> we have very detailed data on land tenure and informality of property rights, and we have agricultural production in rural areas and what are the conflict dynamics. And we have a community questionnaire which is asked to the leader of, of the communities and we find out uh, things about institutional services, infrastructure, public services, and 
shows and files. Uh, other information that we collect are uh, financial and insurance markets, labor market histories. We have modules of time use. Uh, we find out economic conditions in terms of consumption and income, housing conditions, agricultural production, health and education in general. We have modules for, for, for those aspects. Uh, we find out about transfers. We, we, we check for transfers from the government and transfers, informal transfers, just in the community. Uh, access to social programs and participation in organizations and social networks. Political participation and preferences. We have a module of political preferences. Uh, we have ethnicity and skin uh, color. Survey uh, and we have the household uh, located with, with GPS. We will link information with, with that data. So, first, we're going to look at the household poverty and cost uh, and conflict. So, what happens in, in, in the data? What can I show you about these three topics? So, first of all, we're going to see uh, how. Uh, households are transforming over time. So in these three years, 56.9% uh, of households in urban areas changed their composition. In urban areas, 62% of them, them changed the composition. So it's important to try to find out how there's a difference between uh, the, the composition over time. If a uh, person from the original household goes to another household, they're going to start following that house. So what's the, what's the type of migration that they are having? So in urban areas, 81% of them are staying in the same municipality. Uh, and in rural areas, 25% of them are staying in the same municipality. So rural areas are having a uh, migration which is on a much farther distance, let's say. Uh, what are the changes in income due to migration? So in households that are migrating to urban areas are having an increase 95%, they're having a 95% higher income than what they had before. And if they are if they if they are moving into urban area, rural areas, sorry, they're having negative shocks in terms of their income. Of course, there's more correlation than that. Saying anything, anything that's causal. Uh, in terms of the poverty dynamics, this is very interesting because we see here that. Uh, poverty decreased over this period of time. Uh, so 22% of the people that were in poverty stayed in poverty. 21.5% uh, of them left, went out of poverty, and 24 in urban areas. And 7.5% fall into poverty. They were not too poor, and they started being poor. Uh, so this is a nice thing about longitudinal studies. Like if you had a, a cross section, so you would just understand how, what happened between the two periods of time. But if you have cross, uh, longitudinal data, then you know which are the transitions of exactly one household in terms of entering and, and leaving. Uh, now, in terms of shocks, the shocks that we are measuring, we ask the households if they had a a high or medium or low shock in terms of employment, health, family, housing assets, a disaster, natural disasters. We had a big natural disaster in Colombia in, in the middle of the two surveys, which was flooding of, of many years. So this was a good to study with the, with the information that we collected in the, in the follow up. Production and violence. So these are the, the the shocks that the families received, uh, mainly one of the of the big shocks that the families are receiving are in terms of labor, employment, and year production, because it's sort of this rural area. And the second one is health shocks. Uh, now I'm gonna correlate the impact of a violent shock or the difference of the different shocks with social emotional development of kids. So if they had a shock, is the blue dark line. So uh, the only shock that is showing big differences in terms of social emotional development is having a violent shock. 
different, the difference in the two bars the traditional development. What about nutritional status, nutritional development? If you had a violent shock or if you have a natural disaster, you're gonna have big differences in terms of the nutritional status. Uh, we can also look at labor market transitions and we have a, a informal occupation, formal occupation. So as you see, the yellow one is the yellow one in the next, so this is 2010, this is 2013. So you see some kind of uh, inertia, but you also see movements over over the the occupation of people. For example, unemployed. Unemployed are the ones who are changing the most. They they stayed unemployed. 18 percent of them stayed unemployed in 2013. But in fact, uh, as you can see here, uh, the informal sector opens to them as a as a way to to get to earn income. Uh, what about children and youth? So ELCA has this 8,700 children that we are following. Uh, we have socioeconomic household information. We have anthropometrics, a uh, cognitive test. So we have the Peabody test, as the Chilean survey. Uh, we did in 2013 the AASQ uh, test for kids between zero and five, and we're going to do the SDQ for. 2016 for changing just because we can follow like a bigger cohort with that test. Uh, but we can talk about that. That's a mistake that we're going to be doing later. Um, we have also pregnancy information from for each kid. We have children's education, health information, vaccination. We have child care givers information and parental practices. So, in general, in these two years, we've seen a reduction in malnutrition uh, in urban areas and in rural areas in general. Uh, what about the vocabulary test, the, the PPBT? So, the results in 2010 uh, are similar to what we were seeing also in Chile. This is the, the, the blue line, it's a 25% poorer. And this is the least poor, the two, the even five percent least poor, and we see a gap. Like there, the the poor are just below the the which you want. Uh, in 2013, this continues. As I told you, we're gonna we're following the cohort. So here is between when they were three to five, and here we are following uh, the same cohort. So this is for an older age. So the the gap persist over time. In terms of rural and urban areas, I think this is this is trying and very important for public policy because we see that in urban areas the gap is also appearing uh, with a great margin. So this is showing the inequalities that we have in terms of coverage. Uh, urban areas are, are doing much better in the test than rural areas. Uh, and these persist over time as well. Uh, this is a nice linkage between the information in 2010 and 2013 about malnutrition and what's the result in verbal ability in 2013. So, uh, if you had mal, if you if kids that didn't have malnutrition are the blue uh, lines, the blue dark lines. <laughs> Uh, so kids that are that were not did not have malnutrition have higher PPBT scores compared to the kids that are, have malnutrition. Uh, in terms of over age at school, so we see in 2010 that given that that we're looking at, at kids from five to nine, which is primary, we have almost full coverage in primary, so uh, the, the percentage of our age is similar. But if you look at kids 7 to 13, you can see that the overage and dropouts are very high in the poorest quantile. So this is the highest quantile middle and the poorest quantile. So this is, this is important in terms of inequality. Uh, dropout of school, if you had a shock, a health shock or an employment shock, it's more probable that you're going to be dropping out of school for 
had two uh, consecutive months. And in terms of, of rural development, El Kaiser instrument to study the social well-being of rural areas. We have information on changes in land ownership and land use. Land ownership is a big deal in the land ownership of life. Uh, access to social programs also in rural areas are important because it's the most difficult place to get to move people to, to access to, to the programs. Uh, we have information on political participation and electoral behaviors, and it's important because many of the programs also move to uh, have some relationship with, with, with participation, with political participation. Uh, Security perception, we are, we are also asking about that information. And many of the regions that we are uh, serving had or have been occupied by guerrilla groups in our past. So, in terms of land ownership, uh, what I want to show you from this slide is that 30% of the land in Colombia or the houses that we are serving have informal property. 25% uh, of them. Do not own the land, but they are working on the land. Uh, and about 40% of them are land owners. As you can see, these are two pictures without checking the following the same household. But we see that they are transitions in terms of, that, of, of, of land owning. Uh, here is the dynamic using the, the panel data. So 9.1% of households. Uh, own land in that period of time, like they, they, they bought land. And 10 percent of them formalized their property rights, which is a good thing. And 2.6 sold land, and 2.4 lost their land. This slide is showing the different types of uh, activities of, of agricultural activities that households are doing, depending on the number of years that they have suffered. From conflict. So, in general, you'll see that like, if they have been suffering uh, high levels of conflict, they just have grass in their, in their land in the pasture. Uh, or they have unexploited land. So, here, you can, as you can see, uh, if house, for example, households in regions where armed groups have been present in for four years, they have 7.4 percentage point more land. Uh, unexploited. So they they might feel it, they need to or they have to go over to migrate as as forced migrants. Okay, so here I'm gonna talk about the strategies that we use to reduce uh, attrition. So for the first wave, uh, we were sending the results of the cognitive and nutritional development test for the kids. So they were sent to the households. Uh, we asked for contact information from friends and from relatives, and we were giving a small gift, uh, a calling card to the household. Uh, after that first wave, we started having a call center in the university with permanent contact with the households to update location and information of the, of the household that we were uh, going to follow in, the, in 2013. We also had some SMS messages that were sent on their birthdays, on uh, Christmas, on Mother's and Father's Day. Uh, and we had some raffles. So we had a raffle of five bathroom kits, the bathroom kits for, for 10,000 pounds. Uh, and we had a raffle of two gifts, two monthly gifts, uh, to be redeemed in a big national supermarket. The, the price was $275 uh, twice per month. So this engaged them into the, into the survey. Uh, what difficulties we found in the field? So the questionnaire, the length of the questionnaire. Uh, in urban areas, it's 3.2 hours plus the test. Uh, in rural areas, we have five hours plus the test. Um, Rejection, especially in urban areas, and more for high up strata. Uh, they don't want to spend too much time on the survey. Uh, and people see no, they don't see the benefit of the, of the survey. So 
So we have a, a publication, and the publication is meant to the households which have higher socioeconomic status or education, in order for them to print it. And in 2016, we're going to deliver a flyer, but we don't know how to show them how is it important. Like, how it's important to participate. So they say, you're gonna, be, you're gonna keep me for three hours every three years, what am I gonna get of this? Or what is the country going to get of this? Uh, some other things that happen, like they asked, the surveyors asked uh, to the households in 2010, what do you want to get as gifts in 2013? <laughs> and they were expecting those gifts. <laughs> they were asking for plasma TV, and they, they were asking for <laughs> In terms of the, children, of the results of the test of the children, many of them didn't understand the results and they were saying, but tell me what, what is this? Don't go send me a big but tell me what do I have to do. Uh, and the community leaders that were uh, surveying the community questionnaire, they thought that the university would solve their problems and try to, to find the, the, the solutions from the government for these problems. Okay, so this is our web page. Uh, there's the link. Encuesta longitudinal punto The data is publicly available. The first round of the data uh, was publicly available one year later. So we are releasing the data one year after it is collected. But by now, you have the, the two rounds of the, of the survey, which are publicly available. And there we have. Uh, documents, we have the uh, questionnaires, uh, we have the different publications that have been done, uh, pictures, more videos. <laughs> okay, 